Alrighty, so over the last few months, I've been heavily following Alex Hermosi's Twitter. Now, this is for a variety of reasons, but one of the, I guess, most underlooked things in business is that we can see what people are thinking and doing in real time by just checking their Twitter. Like, Twitter is probably the closest insight you can ever get into somebody's brain. And so over the last few months, I've saved some of my favorite Alex Hermosi quotes ever, I, to be precise, there's exactly 41 of them. And these are the only 41 tweets you will ever need to know from Rose to become a millionaire. These also just so happen to be my favorite 41 tweets Alex Ramos has made over the past year, seven, eight months or so. That I think will change your perspective on business. So without any further ado, let's dive right in. I'm just, you know, to share with you all the quotes and also going to talk a little bit about them. So feel free to sit back, get your hot chocolate, and enjoy. This will be a long one. So quote number one. The best diet is the one you follow. The best person to marry is the one you stay with. The best business is the one you stick with. The thing that makes the best isn't the thing itself. It's our commitment to it. And this is also tags off from another one of my favorite quote, which is that the best book is the one you can't put down. And the best diet food is the one you can't stop eating. And the best exercise is the one you can't stop doing. The best thing is the thing that we don't stop because the thing you get the best at is the thing that you do on a long enough time horizon to get really, really good at it. We get good by doing things, not by just one-off, you know, nuances, whatever, right? And so the more we can do something, the better we can get on it, get at it. And this quote from Rosie beautifully explains that. Quote number two, or tweet number two, I should say. Impatient with inputs, patient with outputs. And I love this quote because it's just a reminder every single day that you need to be patient with the outputs. You need to be patient with the results, patient with the outcomes, but impatient when it comes to the inputs, impatient when it comes to the work you have to do to get the results. And the way Hermosi describes this is patience just means figuring out what to do in the meantime. When you're at a store and someone says, hey, please be patient, they're basically just saying to you, hey, figure out what to do in the meantime until I can help you out. And so the perfect thing for this is you have to be patient with your outputs, patient with your outputs. Well, we know that patience means that you have to Find something to do in the meantime. The thing to do in the meantime is the inputs, is the work. And if we become impatient with that, which means we do a ton of it, we get closer to the outputs. But the point is we need to focus on the inputs rather than the outputs because the outputs we can't control, but the inputs we can. Tweet number three, the biggest risk to your future isn't your competition. It's the distractions you insist on keeping in your life rather than doing the things you know you should be doing but aren't. The biggest risk to your future isn't your competition. Rather, it's the distractions that you insist on keeping in your life. Think about that. Your biggest competition, your biggest bottleneck in business is more often than not you and the distractions you keep in your life because you insist that they're important. I don't know what we're on now. Maybe number four or five, but this is the next one. Entrepreneurship isn't a game of best man wins. That's false. It's a game of last man standing. You can have the worst product in the world, but if there's not a single other person selling it, you win. Think of it this way. Imagine if you were selling hot dogs on the side of the street. Hot dogs are you know, known for not being perhaps the best thing that people to sell or to make a business off of. But imagine if you have a hot dog stand right outside of a club at 3 a.m. when everybody gets out and no one's ate for the last, what, four or five hours? You may not be the best at all, but if you're the only one there up at 3 a.m., guess who's going to make all the money? You. And the thing is that business, we've heard this a thousand times, business is a marathon, not a sprint. And it's a matter of who can play, who can play the game the longest because that's how you win. You, you win by playing the game the longest. Okay. Next quote. You change your mind all the time because you have multiple priorities, which means you have none. And I think this is one that really struck me back in the day, which is that the reason why you're constantly going from point A to point B and just jumping around <laughs> is because you have multiple parties. You're trying to get this done and that done and this and that and this and you, you prioritize all these things. But here's the thing. Priority means that one has to be superior. And so if you have multiple priorities, you have none because priority in and of itself means you just choose one. So pick one and make that the priority and everything else is ranked below that and focus your efforts on one thing because the man that chases two rabbits catches none while the, while the man that chases one rabbit catches one. Okay? Next quote, or tweet, I should say. Everyone can make the same promise, but no one can have the same proof. And this is something Hermosi talks about a lot, and you'll see a lot of these tweets have this reoccurring theme theme of proof over promise, because an offer that somebody believes is more valuable and more important than a great offer, a better offer that nobody believes. I'll give you an example. Imagine if I told you, hey man, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna make you a million dollars overnight, tonight. It's gonna cost you $10,000, that's it. Okay, and I'll make you a million dollars tonight. Would you believe me? Probably not. But if I say, hey man, listen, here's the deal. There's gonna be a lot, there's gonna be a bit of work. 
Okay, except we've done this, we've done this thing 600 times for 600 other agencies. Okay, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna implant all our systems into your thing and guarantee that you get to 20k over the next 90 days. It's gonna cost you 10k. Which one are you more likely to buy? Probably the latter. Why? Proof. And so you can have a worse offer, but with more proof and more belief, people are more likely to buy, which means we should optimize for proof over the promise because that's what really makes a difference in this world. It's the only reason why somebody doesn't buy is because they don't believe. Okay, next one. The best results happen long after you get bored of doing it. The best results happen long after you get bored of doing it. And let me ask you right now. Right now, are you bored of the thing you're doing? And if so, if the answer is yes, then good because the results... The great, the outsized returns that everybody wants, but nobody wants to work for, is what happens from doing the obvious thing for an extended period of time, long after it gets boring, without convincing yourself you're smarter than you are and switching to a new thing. It's that simple. But that's why it's so hard to do, because it's so simple. You try and convince yourself that there must be something else to do. Okay, next. Success doesn't come from doing 100 things once. Rather, it comes from doing one thing, not just 100 times, but thousands of times. That is how you get mastery. And in order to be successful, you have to have some degree of mastery of that subject. Think of walking. You didn't just, you didn't try to walk and then to jump and then to crawl and then to sprint all at one time. No, no, you just tried to walk and walk and walk and walk and walk for thousands of times when you were a little kid. And eventually after trying to walk for thousands of times, you eventually got good at it. And the more you walk, the better you got. Same in business. Next. To win in business, you need to be able to say no without remorse and hear no without a loss of enthusiasm. And this one, mm, I think people need to hear, which is that to win in business, you have to be able to say no without remorse. Say no, you have to be able to say no to good ideas. You have to say no to good partnerships, to good offers, to good people, to whatever. So you can say yes to the great ones. Because focus isn't just, like, focus is learning how to say no. That's what focus truly is. It's not doing more things. It's getting rid of more things. You can focus more on the thing that does matter, which inherently means to say no to more things, okay? But in, in this quote, it talks about how to win in business, you need to be able to say no without remorse and hear no without a loss of enthusiasm. You see, fundamentally, people aren't just always going to come to you running and saying yes, 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 24-7. While that would be great, that's unrealistic. And so you're going to hear no a lot. But I want to tell you something. That's normal. And so the point is that you need to be able to hear no and not have your state of mind change. You need to be able to hear the word, no, I don't want your thing, and not have any loss of enthusiasm or conviction in your product just because one person said no. Okay? Next one. If you just did all the shit you already know you should be doing but aren't, you'd be 10x further than you are right now. Sometimes we need to be reminded more than we need to be taught. Less information, more implementation. You see, I'm under the belief that most people in this world know more than they need to know to make more money, 10x more money than they're making now. The thing is, we don't lack information, especially not with the world we live in with ChatGPT and Google and all these crazy YouTube dudes from Hermosi himself and other influencers and individuals as well. We lack implementation. We lack action. We have more information than we could ever possibly need at our fingertips, at our disposal, yet we lack the thing that actually makes that information applicable and usable, which is action, okay? And so take it from Hermosi, not even myself. If you just did all the shit you'd already know you should be doing but aren't, you'd be 10x further than you are right now. And sometimes we need to be reminded more than we need to be touching to hear the same thing over and over and over and over and over again until it finally sticks. Less information, more implementation. Next one. Reminder to beginner entrepreneurs, 100 pieces of proof with a simple offer beats an offer with 100 pieces, but not a single piece of proof. Proof over the promise, like what we just talked about a couple minutes ago. It's that proof is more important than anything in this world, especially nowadays when we live in a world where so many people are so skeptical. Like people are, are more skeptical than they ever have been before. And you can combat that with proof. And so the biggest thing you should optimize for is as a beginning entrepreneur is proof because the more proof you have, the more people believe what you say. And whether that's good or bad, it doesn't matter because if people believe it, they'll be more likely to buy than if they don't believe it, but it's good. So proof over promise and optimize your life and your business for proof. Okay, because guess what? People can copy everything you do except not your proof. So if you want to stand out, just have more proof than everyone else. Moving on, next one. You'll build a bigger brand making content for six months off of a decade of experience than you will off of a decade of content with only six months of experience. And this goes not just for people making content, but I think for anybody out there, which shows us that 
If you want to become, become undeniable and have people listen to you, do something that's worth listening about. You see, if you're in business for 10 years, you make content on that, you have a lot more to share and a lot more credibility and authority and experience to share with people who've been doing content for 10 years, but have only done the thing they're talking about for six months. Once again, proof over the promise. Next one. If there were a shortcut, everyone would have it. And if everyone had it, you wouldn't want it anymore because it wouldn't be valuable. And I think that this is something so many people need to hear, which is that if there was a shortcut, if there was, like, heck, let's just say, like, if there even was a shortcut out there, which there isn't, but if there was, everybody would already have it because everyone would already know about it, okay? And if everybody would know about it, you probably wouldn't want it anymore because if everybody already has it, it's not worth anything. Kind of like water for most of our, you know, most of, of us, um, you know, folks that are very blessed to live in a place where we can get water at our disposal, right? Like, the reason why we don't value that and wake up every single day and, and sat, sit there and just look, look, at, look at the water and be so thankful is because it's so normal and everybody else has it. And so we don't associate any value with it, right? Which, well, not saying that's a good thing, but like the point is that if everybody had the shortcut, if everybody had the thing, it wouldn't be valuable anymore. And if, and if everyone already had it, then it wouldn't be worth anything, right? If everybody had millions of Bitcoins, Bitcoin wouldn't be worth the price it is today. It's the fact that so little people have it and there's so much scarcity that makes it valuable, Okay. Drink your water. Stay hydrated. It's important. Alrighty. Next, moving on. If you have no money, you should have no shame knocking, calling, emailing, texting, DMing, asking. Life changing doors don't open themselves. And this is something so many people need to hear, which is that like in the beginning, like in the beginning, if you have no money, you should have no shame. Like you literally have nothing to lose. Genuinely, nothing to lose. Knock, call, email, text, DM, ask, do what you need to do because life changing doors don't just open themselves. You have to go, go over there and rip that fucking door open and walk through it yourself. No one's going to do it for you. Next quote, whatever number we're on now. People wish for other people's lives, but not for their sacrifices. We wish for the prize, but not for the price. Whew. We wish for the prize, but not for the price. And I think this, this is something so applicable in social media nowadays, which is that so many people just want what everyone else has, but only the good thing, right? Only the, oh, 100K in 10 days, or only the millions of dollars, or this company, or that, whatever. But what they don't want is all of the sacrifices, and pain, and discomfort, and growth, and everything else that that person had to go through, the years of learning that they had to go through to get to the point where they can now redeem this reward. You see, we just want the prize. We just want the good things without the bad. But that's unrealistic, and that's why it's taking you so much longer than you think to get to where you want to go because you're only looking at other people's tip of the iceberg. You're not looking at everything below it that makes the tip of the iceberg the tip of the iceberg. Okay? Moving on. Don't learn to love money. Learn to love making money. Inputs over outputs. And if you can, like, loving money is fine. Or, like, well, depending on, you know, what sort of religion you have and whatever. Like, whatever. That's not a discussion we'll have here right now. But, like... If you can learn to love the process of making money rather than the money, making money will become so much easier as a byproduct because you learn to love the thing that makes the money in the first place, right? For example, instead of being obsessed with looking good, if you can just become obsessed with going to the gym, you will inherently look better because you will go to the gym more often. When you go to the gym more often, you end up looking better. So become obsessed with the process, right? With the journey rather than the destination. Because tell you something cool. Once you get to the destination, you realize it was all about the journey anyway. So you might as well enjoy the journey while it lasts. Next tweet here. If someone told you to hold your breath for 60 seconds, you could do it. But if they told you to hold your breath until they told you to stop, you'd probably start thinking, well, how long to go? What's the point? Is this even good for me? Why should I be doing this? You see, what makes entrepreneurship hard isn't complexity. It's not knowing how long you have to keep pushing before you get relief. And many people could hold their breath for 60 seconds, but would give up at 30 seconds if they didn't know when it would end. Entrepreneurship is a game played in the unknown. Embrace it. Beautiful. Next one. The biggest cause of staying poor isn't missing opportunities. It's not taking advantage of the ones you've got. You see, so many people are always looking for the new opportunity, the best new thing, that they forget to realize the thing that they have right now at their disposal. They forget to realize the thing that they have. And you might be saying, but, but Stefan, I have nothing. That's exactly your advantage, is you have nothing. You have nothing to lose. You have nothing to shame for. You have nothing. That's the beauty. The risk of you, of you doing something is nothing because you have nothing to lose already. That's your advantage. 
You see, everybody's got different advantages. It's just your perspective that changes only things that helps you get through these. So change your perspective and realize you have a lot more advantages than you thought you had before. Next one. The biggest cause of staying poor isn't missing opportunities. It's not taking advantage. Oh, that's all we just talked about. But once again, great quote. <laughs> Next one. If you're trying to start a business, just find shit people already buy and sell it. You can figure out passion, purpose, etc. after you learn the basics. Make a profit, then get cute. But you may realize you'll find your passion about making a profit. Two birds, one stone. You see, so many people in the beginning get so caught up in like trying to find their purpose and their passion. And by all means, this is phenomenal. I think it's actually great advice because making money is already so hard as it is. Why not love the thing you're doing? Because when it gets so hard, if you don't love what you're doing, you're going to give up anyway. So if you love what you do, you'll at least make it through the hard times. But here's the problem is people think that they have to start out loving the thing they do, which is false. Most people, they don't end with the thing they start. I mean, not even just in business, but in careers, in degrees, in whatever. Most people don't stick with the thing they start. Heck, people can't even stick in a fucking relationship for more than a couple of years now, let alone business models, careers, jobs, etc. right? And so I think the point is that like, stop trying to like find your purpose and all this other stuff. Just go out there, like genuinely go out there and just make money. And here's the cool thing is once you make money, you can make, you can make choices. You can then choose to do the thing you're passionate about and purposeful because you have money to, you know, invest and you have capital to expend, et cetera. And you have some uh, safety bank you can use to, you know, whatever, to have an emergency savings. And, or you realize that you, you just fell in love with the process of making money and you just get addicted to that no matter what the business model is. Once again, two bird, one stone. Okay. Next one. Hard work is the point, not the way. You are the output of the hard work you do. Like you are quite literally a summation of all the hard work you've done in your life. And so if you're not a person of value, you haven't done, a, you haven't done a, hard, a lot of hard work. Okay. Because hard work is the point. Like it quite literally is the point. And you are the output of the hard work you do. The harder work you do, the better outputs you get. And the more you level up as well. Next one. The hard work of entrepreneurship is the failure that you're inevitably going to encounter by not knowing what you're doing and then taking action steps despite that with the idea that you will eventually succeed if you don't stop. And I think this is this is quite literally entrepreneurship in a nutshell and, and a beautiful, I, I think, just representation of entrepreneurship, which is that the hard work of entrepreneurship is the failure that you're inevitably going to encounter. Like you will encounter some setbacks and failures and and just, you know, withdrawals or whatever the case is, okay? And by not knowing what you're doing and then taking action, like, that is how you succeed. That is entrepreneurship. It's like having no fucking clue what's going on, but still saying, hey, man, I can't see shit in this storm, but I'm going to keep walking because I know that I, if I keep walking, eventually I will make it out the other side because nothing lasts forever. Bad times, hard feelings, storms, etc. Nothing lasts forever. But you know what makes it a lot harder? If you stand still or heck, even walk with the storm. Because <laughs> imagine this, the storm's coming this way, you're coming this way. You walk past the storm, boom, you get by pretty quickly. Here's what most people do, is they go, 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 they get in the storm, they go, oh shit, there's a storm, and they start walking backwards. Here's what happens, is the storm just follows them the entire time. Choose your heart. Okay, next one. When you start a business, everything is hard and inefficient. You have no skills, no money, no friends, no connections, no nothing. You only have time and you have to invest time ineffectively to become efficient. You can't skip it. It's what creates the skill, money, connections, and whatever. Or it's, that's what creates the skill, money and connections that make it easy. Next. The secret to becoming an overnight success is to advertise for three years straight, keep improving your product, and hire people who love your customers as much as you do. And if you do that for three years, then you'll become an overnight success. You see, the idea of an overnight success doesn't exist. The idea that you just wake up one day and have this eureka moment where you just snap your fingers and all of a sudden become a billionaire with everything you've ever wanted in your life isn't true. And while I do believe in manifestation, manifestation is nothing without action. And so... If you want the secret to become an overnight success, put your head down for three years and advertise and get customers and treat those customers well. And after three years, you'll wake up one night and you'll become an overnight success. Next quote, next tweet, I should say. Find what works. This is, this is quite literally, I was even on a call with Ramosi a couple weeks ago. This is quite literally his philosophy for scaling businesses, which mind you, he does for a living. This, this quote sums it up really, really well. Find what works. Do more of what works 
Find the thing preventing you from doing more of what works, solve it, do more of what works, repeat. Even Hermosi, when I was on a call with him, said the other day that what he does is when he when he goes into new businesses and talks to new business owners, et cetera, requires new companies, the first question he asks is, why can't we do more of what we're already doing to make the money we're making? And he gets one of two answers, which is one, uh, I'm not really sure. I guess we could be doing more and then they go ahead and do more. Or two, well, there's this problem. And then the number one priority becomes to solve that problem so they can then do more. This is his, Alex Moji's three-step process for even like solving problems and scaling businesses is do more, do better, do new. And that's the rankings. Do more, do better, do new. Which say he would rather do do more of something than do something new, or even do or or do something better than do something new. He'll do something new last because once again, like if you look at this like a skill graph, right? Let's say you're doing something, you've acquired the skill up to here, and then you get stuck, you plateau. If you start something else, if you like switch to another thing, you do something new, you start back here at level one. You restart the game. Right, so it's better just to do more of what you're doing then until more doesn't work, and then do better, which it means to fix, to solve the thing, and then do more of the thing, because more is typically the easiest way to grow because it's the thing that we control the most. Okay, next tweet. Focus means leaving money on the table. That's it. Focus means leaving money on the table because when you focus, you have to say no to a lot of good opportunities. Once again, you say no to a lot of good opportunities so you can say yes to the great ones, so you can say yes to the best ones. But focus in the, in and of itself means to just to say no to a bunch of things so you can just do one thing, which means that there will be money left on the table. You will feel like you're missing out. There will feel like you're passing up ideas. But if you can stay focused on a long enough time horizon on the right things, it'll pan out. Okay, next tweet. Anyone can get rich fast, comma, as long as you're willing to make no money for a long period of time while you work to get good enough to get rich fast. This goes back to the thing we talked about earlier with the tip of the iceberg. You see, most people want the prize, not the price. Right, most people look at the tip of the iceberg when they forget to see what's below, right? Which is that like anyone can get rich fast, comma as long as you're willing to make the money for a long period of time to learn the skills that you need to learn to then get rich fast. You see, you can get rich fast, you can get rich overnight, but typically that happens from accumulating, whoopsie daisy, accumulating an abundance of skills on a long enough time horizon, so you then can learn how to get rich fast. So if you look at it realistically. It's getting rich pretty slow, okay? Which brings me to the next quote. Slow and steady wins the race because they never stop. You see, slow and steady never stops. They never burn out. They never give up. They never are in a bunch of pain. Even think of a race, right? Once again, business is a marathon, not a sprint. As a matter of fact, I would argue it's an ultra giga infinite marathon. It doesn't actually ever end, right? And so the person that wins is the person that just never stops moving. And if we think of it from an energy conservation um, perspective, the person who goes slow and steady conserves a bunch more energy and therefore they can, they can walk or run for a longer distance, for a longer period of time, which in business means that you win because if you outlast everyone else, there will be no option but to buy from you, which means you win in the end because eventually everybody will give up at some point. Okay. Next tweet. Nowhere worth going, you can get to in a rush. The more you rush, the longer it takes. And for most, they never stop rushing, so they never get there at all. Next one. Resiliency is measured by the time it takes you to behave normally after something bad happens, with the most resilient person showing no change to begin with. Note, this doesn't mean you stop feeling bad. It just means you stop letting how you feel change how you act. So resiliency is measured by the time it takes you to behave normally after something bad happens. For example, you up on a call with a prospect, the prospect says no. Most people get butt hurt. They're like, oh, I don't know about this anymore. They might give up. Most resilient people aren't phased and just keep doing the thing they know they have to do because that is resilience. Okay, next tweet. Haitian proverb. Behind mountains are more mountains. Goals aren't finish lines. They're just mile markers. When you get to the top of the mountain, there's always another mountain to climb. Because behind one mountain is another mountain. So the point is, stop worrying so much so much about the destination and getting to the top of the mountain. Enjoy where you're at. Enjoy the process. Because when you get to the top, you realize that you have to just keep going up again. And if you only are happy when you get to the top, you'll never be happy. Because behind every mountain is another mountain. Enjoy the process. Chop wood, carry water. Really good book, by the way. Next tweet. You have time. Be patient. 
Give yourself grace. We all go at our own pace, everything in its own time. Good things come to those who wait. It'll be your turn soon enough. I don't know. You're going to fucking die. Take your shot. Okay, once again, this is, this is more of a, like, one that's harder to interpret, for example, but it shows us just the, the cool glimpse you can get inside the mind of somebody who is such a, a genius when it comes to the marketing and sales to the business aspect. Right? We get this inside of the mind look when you just go through somebody's Twitter and see some of the random tweets they make, right? And even Hermosi here just saying, hey, hey man, you got time. Like, be patient. Give yourself grace. Like, everybody goes at their own pace. Some quicker, some faster, whatever the case. It doesn't matter. Good things come to those who wait. It'll be your t- turn soon enough. Okay, next tweet. So, me- so many people treat their dreams like it's a pregnancy. You don't need to wait nine months to get started. Maybe that's you. Disclaimer. Your dream isn't a pregnancy. So don't wait nine months to get started. Get going now. Okay, next tweet. People quit when things get hard because the thought of something being hard forever is unbearable. But nothing hard lasts forever. You either quit or it gets, or, or (laughs) you either quit, it gets easier, or you get harder. No matter what, it always ends. But you only lose when you quit before you see it through. I think this one's so beautiful because it talks about how. People quit when things get hard because they just think that the hard things will last forever. But if you could remind yourself that nothing lasts forever, especially not hard things. Like once again, the storms don't last forever. And after the storm is the rainbow. And after the storm, all the seeds have water and they grow, etc., etc., etc. But most people give up in the storm because like, oh my goodness, a storm. Forgetting that the storm will pass. You just have to stick through the storm long enough to actually see it pass. So don't give up when the storm comes because once again, nothing hard lasts forever. And if nothing hard lasts forever, you just have to, to stick it out. Okay, next one. Hard times are the best times, but only once you've gone through them. We only see that truth when we look back. And it's weird because if you just look back right now in your life and look back at some of the best times and some of the the times when you learned the most and and grew the most and, and maybe even had the most fun, you look back and you go, wow, some of these really tough times in my life turned out to make me the person I am today and really helped me grow. Right, even I, I look back at my life and I go, wow, these times where I was in the moment feeling like it was the end of it ended up being some of the best times of my life where I learned the most, where I grew the most, what I'm so thankful for now. The problem is in the moment, it's so hard to realize that and I realize that there's some of the best times just only afterwards. So if you can remind yourself when you're going through the tough times that, hey, eventually this will pan out, it makes those times easier. Okay, This is a bit of a longer one, but I think it's really, really good. One of my favorite ones. Um, Hermosa got asked to give new entrepreneurs advice before starting a 90 day sprint to their first business. And he gave them 13 tips of, of advice to beginner entrepreneurs, which are just like this in and of itself, people charge thousands of dollars for it. And Hermosa just gives this away for free. It's incredible. Um, it's number one, follow instructions. Number two, when you reach something you don't understand how to do it, Google it first, then ask. Number three, when you figure it out, post it somewhere. Others may have struggled. You may help them. Number four, Actually follow the rule of 100 daily, which is 100 outreaches, uh, 100 calls, 100 DMs, 100 emails, 100 minutes of content, or $100 on paid ads. That's the rule of 100, okay? You'll be excited for a week, then the excitement will wear off. That's when the work begins. Six, your, your work works on you more than you work on it. You are the product that's getting built more than your community. Remember that. Seven, everything is unscalable in the beginning. That's the point. It's how you learn every piece of it. This is called mastery. Eight, the pain of repetition is what forces you to seek improvement. When you figure out ways to get more for what you do, you have gained skill. Nine, if you complain, you are dead to me. Ten, literally thousands of people have already succeeded. You are not special. Repeat the same activities. Repeat the same outcomes. Eleven, write down every reason you're going to stick with it. Put it in front of you and revisit this when you need to remember to stick with it. Twelve, Business is shockingly simple, but surprisingly hard. The hard comes in the form of consistency the moment you don't want to do it. Or just skip today is the day you realize what hard feels like. Overcome. 13. Just win. Next quote. Work begins when the excitement to work ends. Just goes off one of the ones we just talked about, which is that the real work, the work that everybody talks about, right? Deep work. I'm, I'm a grinder. I'm a hustler. That stuff begins. The real work begins when the excitement of the thing you're doing wears off and you're bored. Next one. New entrepreneurs spend so much time trying to make their offer scalable or even their business scalable, they forget to make it valuable. You see, so many people are so caught up in trying to make things scalable. Yeah, I'll tell you something cool. Anything multiplied by zero is still zero. 
And so you can make the best, most scalable offer in the world. If you have zero clients, what's the point? In the beginning, inherently, everything you do will be unscalable because it's the beginning. You're learning and you're the only person there. And so therefore, stop focusing on scalability and focus on value. Focus on making something that's actually good and therefore you actually get people to buy. And once you get people to buy, once you have something greater than zero to multiply it by, you can then start to make it scalable to have more in. But first, optimize for consumption or for people rather than scalability. Okay, next one. The answers you're looking for aren't in your newsfeed. As a matter of fact, I'd argue they aren't on Instagram, they aren't on YouTube, they aren't on Google. They're probably not even in this YouTube video. Maybe this will make you realize something, but the answers you're looking for are not in your newsfeed. They're not on your fucking phone. You know where they are? They're in you putting in hours and hours and hours of undeniable work to the point you learn the thing you needed to learn. That's where the answers are. Okay? Next tweet here. You win by outlasting your competition, not beating them head to head. You wait for them to give up, not for them to give in. Otherwise, you're only scoring a made up goal on a made up timeline with rules that never exist to begin with. Once again, the best way to win at business is just to outlast everybody else. This is even very applicable to fighting. The best way to win a fight is just to be the guy that doesn't fucking give up. If you can be the guy that never ever gives up, it'll become impossible to beat you. The person the hardest person to beat is the person that never gives up. It's the hardest person to fight. It's not the best person, not the most skilled, it's not the most talented, not the whatever. It's the person that never gives up. That is the hardest person to beat because no matter what you do, they will not crack. Okay, next. Um, Where's the next one? Is that it? I think that's 41. I think we've done it. Okay, there you go. Those were 41 of my favorite Alex Mosey tweets over the last year. As a matter of fact, there's been hundreds of thousands of more tweets I love from Alex Mosey that he's posted way prior to this year. So if you want me to make another video sharing uh, more tweets, then comment down below specifically what kind of tweets. Do you want me to make tweets just on sales, maybe just on marketing, just on business, or do you just want to hear more tweets from a different era of Hermosi's life? Okay, comment down below what you want. If you guys like this video, I'll make more sharing some of my favorite Hermosi tweets uh, with some backstory as well that maybe will help inspire you to do something else. Other than that, Alex Hermosi is the fucking goat. Hope you guys enjoyed. Go out there and make some money because remember, business is surprisingly simple. It also, or rather said, very, very, very hard. Simple, not easy. Just win.